In the center of the room was a big circle of dirt, where I guess a dinosaur exhibit was supposed to go. I watched nervously as the guard took sharp white teeth out of the pot and pushed them into the soil. He smoothed them over while the general smiled coldly. The guard stepped back from the dirt wall and wiped his hands. Ready, general. Excellent. Water them. We'll let them scent their prey. The guard picked up a little tin watering can with daisies painting on it, which was kind of bizarre because what he poured out wasn't water. It was a dark red liquid, and I got the feeling it wasn't Hawaiian punch. The soil began to bubble. Soon, the general said. I'll show you, Luke. Soldiers that will make an army from that little boat of yours look significant. Luke clenched his fists. I spent years training my forces. When the princess of Dramda rise at the mountain, they'll be the best. Ha! The general said. I don't deny your troops will make fine honor guard for Lord Kronos. As for you, of course, you will have a role to play. I thought Luke turned paler than when the general said that. But under my leadership, the forces of Lord Kronos will increase a hundredfold. We will be unstoppable. Behold, my ultimate killing machines. The soil erupted. I stepped back nervously. In each spot where a tooth had been planted, a creature was struggling out of the dirt. The first of them said, Meow. It was a kitten. A little orange tabby with stripes like a tiger. Then another appeared, until there were dozens rolling around and playing in the dirt. Everyone stared at them in disbelief. The general roared. What is this? Cute, cuddly kittens? Where did you find these teeth? The guard who bought the teeth cowered in fear. From the exhibit, sir. Just like you said, the saber-toothed tiger. No, you idiot. I said the Tyrannosaurus. Gather up those, those infernal fuzzy little beasts and take them outside and never let me see your face again. The terrified guard dropped his watering can. He gathered up the kittens and scampered out of the room. Now, the general pointed at another guard. Get me those teeth right now. The new guard ran off to carry out his orders. Imbeciles, the general muttered. That's why I don't use mortals, Luke said. They're unreliable. They are weak-minded, easily bought, and violent, the general said. I love them. A minute later, a guard hustled into the room with his hands full of large, pointy teeth. Excellent, the general said. He climbed down to the balcony railing and jumped down 20 feet. When he landed, the marble floor cracked under his leather shoes. He stood, whining, and rubbed his shoulders. Curse my stiff neck. Uh, another hot pad, sir, a guard said. More Tylenol? No, the general said. It will pass. The general brushed off his silk suit and snatched up the teeth. I shall do this myself. He held up one of the teeth and smiled. Dinosaur teeth. Ha! Those foolish mortals don't even know when they have dragon teeth in their possession. And not just any dragon teeth. They come from the ancient Sibirius herself. They shall do nicely. He planted them in the dirt, twelve in all. Then he scooped up the watering can. He sprinkled the soil with the red liquid, tossed the can away, and held his arms out wide. Rise! The dirt trembled. A single, skeletal hand shot out of the ground, grasping at the air. The general looked at the balcony. Quickly! Do you have their sense? Yes, Lord, one of the snake ladies said. She took out a slash of silvery fabric, like the kind that the hunters wore. Excellent, the general said. Now, once my warriors catch its scent, they will pursue its owner relentlessly. Nothing can stop them. No weapons known to Half-Blood or Hunter. They will tear the hunters and their allies to shreds. Toss it here. As he said that, skeletons erupted from the ground. There were twelve of them, one for each tooth that the general had planted. They were nothing like Halloween skeletons, or the kind that you might see in cheesy movies. These were growing flesh, as I watched, turning into men, but men with dull gray skin, yellow eyes, and modern clothes. Gray muscle shirts, camel pants, and combat boots. If you didn't look too closely, you could almost believe that they were human, but their flesh was transparent and their bodies shimmered underneath like x-ray images. One of them looked straight at me, regarding me coldly, and I knew that no cap of invisibility was going to fool that. The snake lady released the scarf and it fluttered down towards the general's hand. As soon as he gave it to the warriors, they would hunt Zoe and the others until they were extinct. I didn't have time to think. I ran and jumped with all my might, plowing into the warriors and snatching the scarf out of the air. What's this? followed the general.